take me out with the crowd. Oh, buy me some peanuts and crackers, Jack. I don't care if I never get back. Let me root, root, root for the whole team. If they don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes or out at the old ball game. Take me out to the ball game. In 1888, American businessman and baseball magnate Albert Spaulding organised a world tour for the Chicago White Stockings. They played a few matches in England. In Ken Burns' mammoth 18-hour documentary series on baseball, highly recommended by the way, he said, and I quote, Baseball failed to catch on anywhere his teams had played. But this, unfortunately, isn't true because in the first ever Baseball World Cup, Britain would actually beat America at its own national pastime. But how did this happen? How did Britain beat America at baseball? To find that out, we need to go all the way back. Trying to find the precise origins of a sport can be a pointless exercise. Hitting something or kicking something is universal to the human experience, but we can reliably trace baseball all the way back to 18th century Britain. The earliest written reference to baseball can be found in John Newbery's 1744 book, A Little Pretty Pocket Book. It's pretty similar to the sport we know today. This was taken to America, and in 1791 we find the earliest written record of the game being played in the United States. A law from Pittsfield, Massachusetts, forbade the game from being played near the town's new meeting house. By the early 19th century, variants were being played across the United States. However, a lot of people really wanted to brand baseball as a thoroughly American game. In the early 1900s, an entire committee, consisting of some of the most important men in the sport at the time, was created for the purpose of rewriting history. This resulted in the famously erroneous claim that baseball was invented in 1839 by Abner Doubleday in New York. But this alternate history was not enough to stop one of the most important figures in professional baseball being British. In 1835, Harry Wright was born in Sheffield. His family later moved to New York, and there, alongside his father, he played cricket at St George's Cricket Club in Manhattan. Yep, cricket was popular in America well into the Civil War. In 1869, the first professional baseball team was created, the Cincinnati Red Stockings. Harry played centre field, as well as helping to manage the club and recruit new players. He's credited with the first written record of a seventh inning stretch, which is when everyone gets up and walks around a bit in the seventh inning. As well as having the world's oldest football club, Sheffield can also lay claim to being at the centre of the first professional baseball team. As early as the 1870s, American teams were touring England. In 1888 came Spalding's World Tour. Baseball was already being played in this country, and the tour sparked a mania. Over 8,000 people watched a match at Lord's Cricket Ground in London. Another, at the Oval Cricket Ground, attracted the Prince of Wales, later King Edward VII. Shortly after these matches, a large crowd packed into York to set up their own baseball club. By July 1890, it was reported that there were over 90 baseball clubs in England alone. There were more clubs in Yorkshire than anywhere else. It was in such demand that established cricket manufacturers John Wisden also produced baseball equipment. It also spread to Scotland, with teams formed in Edinburgh and Aberdeen. Wales was slightly slower to take up the sport, but in 1893, Cardiff Central claimed to have played the first baseball game in South Wales. 
parts of the country began to gain a reputation for their skill at the sport, especially Merseyside, where it's clear they were playing it even before the mania hit. In a letter to the Liverpool Echo in 1889, a local resident called for an all-star Liverpool team to challenge the Chicago White Stockings. The fact that there were enough high-quality players in the area to create an all-star team shows that the sport was already well-established there by the time of the World Tour. Even into the 1930s, Merseyside dominated British baseball, even beating a touring Japanese side 20-4. Another hotbed of popularity was the Midlands. In 1890, the National League of Baseball of Great Britain was established with Aston Villa, today the football team, winning the first and only professional championship. So, why did baseball become so popular in Britain? One reason is that it's so similar to games like rounders, which have been played for hundreds of years, that it was easy to understand and play it. It was also a great spectator product. Cricket matches can take days to finish and require at least a full day of play. Baseball only takes a couple of hours. It was a much quicker, easily consumable alternative. But I promised you a British victory here, so back to the original question. How did Britain beat America at baseball? It's 1938. Britain is experiencing another baseball boom. The first Baseball World Cup is underway, though technically it's an amateur World Series and only has two participants. Great Britain will play America in five different locations across the north of England. The American team is made up of high school and college players. The British team is made up of professional British and Canadian players, whose status in the Empire grants them citizenship. A bit like France getting the best football players through their African colonies. On the 13th of August 1938, over 10,000 spectators pack into Liverpool to see Britain win 3-0. First baseball test match at Liverpool yesterday was a case in which the pupils beat the Masters. Ross Kendrick of Oldham gave the finest pitching performance of his career. Pitching throughout, he got 16 strikeouts. Two days later, in Hull, 5,000 spectators watched Britain win again, 8 runs to 6. On August 17th, the US win their only match of the series at Rochdale, 5-0. On the 19th, at Halifax, Britain clinches a series with a 4-0 win. The next day, Britain wins the final game of the series in Leeds, 5-3. You may be thinking, well, they beat high school and college players, so obviously they won, and that's true, but it still is an impressive achievement considering that America had far more money and facilities for professional training and development than Britain at the time. And I know losing to the British is embarrassing, but losing to British Canadians is even worse. But this 1938 World Series win represents a swan song of British baseball. It was the peak, the pinnacle, the zenith of achievement which could never again be replicated. Because when war broke out in 1939, the momentum gathered up to that point was lost. Players and fans had to go off and fight or find jobs, and when they came back, it had lost its steam. Efforts to revive the sport after the war fizzled out. Baseball is still being played in the UK today, with 48 clubs operating across the countries, but at nowhere near the same scale as before. The story of British baseball is one which turns our perception of the past on its head. We really don't imagine Victorian Britons playing baseball or 19th century Americans playing cricket, but here they were. And here was Britain at the centre of the story of professional baseball in America. Did you enjoy that? I did. Now subscribe or the cameraman gets it. <laughs>